living organisms. Everything alive is working and performing its daily tasks to live or survive. Every organism's body uses many functions, all controlled and dependent on other parts of itself every single day. But just think, how do our bodies even work and the bodies of other life work and what parts of us keep us able to do the things that we do all the time? Cell theory's main concepts didn't just pop into existence. It all dates back to around 1665. An English physicist named Robert Hooke was the first to describe his observations of cells. His studies led to an idea that all biotic factors were composed of these many fibers called cells. He basically proposed that cells were the basic unit of living organisms. It was concluded that cells made up all living things, and new evidence was being quickly discovered. Now they had the facts, but needed to go deeper, propose ideas, and figure out even more about cells. During the early 1800s, scientists were proposing new ideas on the basic structure of organisms relative to cells and tissue. It wasn't until 1824 that a very interesting thought was suggested from a French scientist. The idea stated that cells were also physiological units as well. It made sense too. For example, think of all parts of a clock. Each piece isn't inside just to compose its design, but to perform its given task. Just like how our body's parts work together to perform what they need to to keep the clock ticking. Many scientific observations passed until a groundbreaking contribution was made. Matthias Schlieden gave the idea that all cells arise from living, pre-existing cells. Let's look at the important gathered information. Robert stated that everything was made of cells. Robert led on to the idea that cells are the basic unit of life. Matthias gave the idea that cells came from pre-existing cells. These three tenets made what is cell theory, a trinity of three major discoveries that would change life science forever. There is much more to uncover though.